Phone. Coffee. I don't have coffee. Oh, you don't have coffee. How can you do that? You can't touch my electrical system until after you had your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I really want coffee early in the morning. I know these guys. They drag their ass out of bed early in the morning and nothing, nothing works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we wait. Okay, now you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, sir. Bien. <laughs> okay. All right. It is day two, part two. It's about seven o'clock in the morning. Coffee's in hand. Well, mine's tea, actually. Ginger tea. Ginger and lemon tea. Mm, very yummy. Mm -hmm. But that's how we're starting our morning. And we are about to start gutting our complete electrical system. There's not too many days you wake up and say that. <laughs> but today, we start building this. And this is the hybrid 24 volt, 12 volt system I've been talking to you guys about for a long, long time. And today we start. So, well, yesterday we start, but today we actually start hooking up the wiring. So we're stripping out the entire foundation of everything that you see here now. So all of the 12 volt parallel configuration and all the Battleborn batteries that's there now is going to become stripped out and we have all new wires to go in to put them in series and parallel same thing over here this is all going to get cleaned out and reorganized so we're going to have a new distribution block for the 24 volt system for all the charging sources and a new distribution block for the 12 volt system for the base system in the boat and that's what's going to keep everything in the boat going so it's going to be a big day I have no idea if it's going to go smooth or bumpy but Stick around, because we are about to find out. Okay, you ready? Ready, sir. Once we do this, we're committed. There's no turning back. You sure? Sure. <laughs> All right, so this is our battery switches, the main overload, uh, well, the main contacts entirely for the boat, so. All right, switch them 90 degrees. Boom, ships down. Okay. okay. Everything disconnected. Everything disconnected. So now we can do this wiring and start disconnecting batteries.
Well, many, many, several hours later, <laughs> everything is disconnected and removed, except for the prime, the main bank of eight batteries. But this is all cleaned up. Sebastian's now just working on hooking up the AC wiring to the new inverter location. So that's underway. And yeah, as you can see, this is what we call a clean slate or a fresh canvas. So everything is removed and we have nothing remaining but just the basics. And of course the basics, what do they encompass? Well, we have our solar array line one. So this is the first bank. Solar array bank two. Wind generator. We have alternators. So these are the outputs for the two alternators, which are also going to be converted to 24 volts in this installation. Alternator ground strap. And other than that, we have our house negative and our house positive. This one right here. So that's for the 12 volt system that is the base system on the boat. This is also 12 volt. This is for the windlass. So that's the only major power draw that's going to be hooked up to that system. So now, we need to start laying out our new gear, the new installation, where we're going to put everything. Some will be similar, and some is going to change. The batteries here will be the same. We have a new battery going in here for the 12 volt system, and then we'll line up all our regulators right there. So that is next. Yeah, first thing we're going to do is bring in the new 12 volt battery, and I think we can just temporarily hook it up just to the house bank wires, because <laughs> it's bloody hot in here. <laughs> yeah. We have no power, no fans, no nothing. So. If we get that hooked up, at least I can probably turn on a couple of fans that'll give us a little bit of air for circulating and keep us cooled down a little bit because, yeah, like I said, it's hot. So that's first, and I'm pretty sure we're going to put it right back in one of these corners here. So, probably this side, and then we'll put one of the, a couple of more of the charge controllers opposite. So if you want to drop it right in that corner, and we'll see how it fits. And just a little bit of info on this battery, this is a 12 volt truck start battery. So the advantage here is that it gives out a high amount of cranking amps, but not a lot of capacity. And that's why we're using it for the house system. So we need one 12 volt battery that we're going to use basically like a great big capacitor for the entire 12 volt system on the boat. And then we're going to run that capacitor or we're going to keep it charged with this guy right here. And that's the Victron MPT, MPPT 150-100 charge controller. Now, yes, I know you're saying that charge controller is meant for solar controlling, but it's also basically a DC to DC converter with the advantage it's got a three-stage regulator built into it. So if we use this battery, the battery will act like a buffer anytime we fire up anything in the boat that requires a huge load, including the windlass, because the windlass is going to be the prime concern. The engine start battery, it has its own battery no matter what. It's going to be fully isolated from the system on a 12 volt battery just for the engine. This is just for the house. And what it will do is as soon as we apply any loads to that, the Victron system is going to immediately compensate by bringing up the voltage and supplying the amperage for whatever loads that we're drawing. So this battery will never in fact become discharged. It's going to operate its life here just like it would in a truck as a truck start battery, what it was designed for. So it's perfect. All that's going to happen is a load is going to be applied. The battery will immediately absorb it. The charge controller will turn on, start providing the power to replace it up to 100 amps, which is perfect. We don't have anything on the boat that draws more than 100 amps, including the windlass. So that 100 amp charge controller is going to live a very easy life compared to what it has lived now, maintaining our solar array. But now we don't need a big charge controller like that because we're running our solar array in 24 volts, which means half the amperage. So the amperage on the solar controllers is going to be divided between a 70 amp and a 50 amp both running at 24 volts. It should be perfect. Works on paper. We're testing reality. <laughs> okay, so yes, we're gonna hook up the house positive to the positive, the windless positive to the positive, house negative to the negative. And for now, we're gonna bring this solar controller in that's hooked up to bank one. And we're gonna use it just to charge this battery because this battery is brand new, probably doesn't have a lot of power in it, but we wanna run some fans. So we're gonna use the solar power that we're wasting right now and charge this battery up and run our fans. Again, in theory, it works. <laughs> we should know momentarily. <laughs> positive and positive here. Mm-hmm. Uh, where's the negative of the controller? This one. 
Yeah, that one should fit. This. Okay. We need a key. Okay, so now you can hook up the negative and it should turn on. And the positive. The positive is tight. Good, okay. Yeah, absorption. Absorption, okay, so the battery's almost full then. All our gauges are zero over here, so turn on the switches. The engine too? Sure. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Water pressure. <laughs> Good set, good catch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that means yeah! we have power, <laughs> we have air. <laughs> yeah, more important than power sometimes is just air. <laughs> we needed some air movement, so. Now we can get some fans running. Obviously the battery's almost topped up, that's good, because it's running on absorption mode. And, all right, we can continue laying out our project with a little bit of cool, <laughs> big benefit. Day three. Yes, I said day three. <laughs> I told you this was gonna be a long project, right? <laughs> well, it was, so we're not quite done yet, but huge, huge progress. Everything is working very, very well. We've got all the major systems hooked up, and I'm just gonna give you a quick little preview of it now, and then we'll pick it up at a later date because we need a couple of days to test everything and see how it's all running. So far, all indications are that everything is good. So we're going to hope it stays on that track, but again, we don't know until we test it for a couple of days. So, but you look at this and you can see we've got all of our Battleborn batteries hooked up now. These ones are all hooked up in their series and parallel circuit. And we got two parallel wires that brings them over through here into this bank. So here and here, and then we've got all of our sets of Battleborn batteries here. So there's four pairs over here and two pairs over here in series. And then they're all parallel together with these parallel wires here. These are the series wires, so they join a negative to a positive. And then from each opposing set of batteries, we just bring another positive to a positive and a negative to a negative. And that's basically all there is to it. It's as simple as that. Just, you know, putting a wire between two batteries, a positive to a negative, joining them together. And then you put the 12 volt battery in series with 12 volt, and now you have a 24 volt battery. So we have six 24 volt battery components on board, all in parallel with each other, which are netting us a combined total of 600 amp hours at 24 volts. Amazing. I mean, that's 15 kilowatts of power in reserve on sophisticated lady. <laughs> that's the stuff I kind of dream about for a long time, and today it's reality for the first time. So we've got it all hooked up. You can see we've moved all of our charge controllers. So we have our 70 amp, our 100 amp, our 50 amp, and our 30 amp. So the 70 amp is running all the small panels that are on the side rails and on the top of the bimini. The 100 amp is running all the large panels on top of the dodger and the arch, the radar arch. The 50 amp, this is our house maintenance system, so it is feeding off of our 24 volt bank, which is negative supply there and positive supply here. So this is the 24 volt hookups, and that takes 24 volts through these wires around into our 12 volt battery that you saw us put in yesterday. So that is our 12 volt start battery that now runs the entire house. 
the last final one here that's our 30 amp and that's what's hooked up to the wind generator which is a 12 volt wind generator so the wind generator is feeding this at well whatever voltage it's putting out at the time through this fuse and into our 12 volt battery. So of course that means that our wind generator is not feeding the 24 volt bank, but what it is doing is decreasing the amount of power from the boat on the 12 volt battery just by charging and putting power into the 12 volt battery whenever it's blowing, whenever it's windy. So whenever the wind generator is running, it's charging the 12 volt battery and just offsetting our consumption from the 24 volt bank. So in a sense, it's still all measured, it's just not part of our charging curve with all the solar panels now. So the only thing we're tracking as far as power coming into the boat is with the 70 amp and the 100 amp, which are the, the two main arrays of solar panels. Now we're going to go into our Victron Connect app, going to load it up, and there's our whole new inventory of everything. I've relabeled everything because all of the charge controllers changed, so we put everything in different categories. And you can see here at the bottom, I've got one here that's the 12 volt wind generator and the one below that is the 12 volt house charger. So these are all 24 volt, everything up here. This is 12 volt. So they're not connected to the network. Only the 24 volt charging sources are actually connected to the network. You can see this is our smart BMV 712 and that's this gauge right here, the little one. This is the one that repeats everything and sends it all through Bluetooth to the phone. And you can see we've just finished charging. It's beautiful I mean we're sitting exactly 28.8 volts 100% charge and there is 0.5 of an amp going in that's just stabilizing the system that's it it's in float mode but we have our water maker working we've got the freezer on full the fridge on full because the batteries are already full and it's only two o'clock in the day so we are using all the surplus power just to run extra stuff extra accessories in the boat but we are fully charged 28.8 volts Awesome. <laughs> Just awesome. 600 amp hours or 15 kilowatts of power in our reserve right here. Thank you, Battleborn. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. So all we can say is thank you very much to Victron Energy and Battleborn Batteries. They are giving me the chance to experiment and test my ideas and theories and see if they actually work. And so far, fingers crossed, everything is working perfectly. So we're going to have to keep testing it for a couple of days. We'll get back to you on that after we've reviewed everything. we got to go in and we'll label all of our wiring now because now everything is hooked up where we want it to stay and everything is working. So that's when we break out the little label maker guy and start going crazy putting labels everywhere. So in six months we go, what wire is that? What's that? No, I don't know. It'll have a label on it. So good piece of gear to have on a boat right there. But that's it for this. We're just going to continue testing it. We're fully charged already. We're going to clean up, put all the tools away, because you can see we're in a bit of a disaster, and take the rest of the day off. I think it's time for a bike ride. <laughs> yeah. So, see you later, guys. Have a good one, and I will catch you in the next episode. Cheers. And on that note, it is aperitif time, because that is a major job finished, and we don't do this too much anymore. This is our, I was going to say Bailey's, but no. Drambuie. And Drambuie, see, see. Now, we don't do this too much anymore, but this is our Drambuie. We only break it out on special occasions, and today is a special occasion because that's a major, major mission accomplished. And now it's just down to testing, so. Digested. Digested, sorry. Digested, not aperitif. Bad Canadian. <laughs> Salut, Sebastian. Salut. Salut. Salut, you guys. Salut, you guys. Salut, Thanks guys. for joining us for this ride. I mean, it's been an adventure, one I've been waiting for for a long time, and it's finally come to fruition. And now we start to reap the benefits of it. So, cheers to that. Okay, make an amazing job. Uh, it was a big job, that's for sure. Big, big job. And new shoes. But, so far, success. So, salut to you guys. Over and out.
<laughs> Animals from the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're starting to think we're part of the uh, part of the tours now because all the tour boats always come buzzing straight past us, really slow, and everybody's looking, and we wave, and everybody waves, and. I think they're just looking at it going, oh yeah, these guys have been here for 11 months and they just make, you know, stories about San Andres on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy as that sounds, that's what we do right now. And just keep working. And celebrating new events. So cheers to that. Cheers. 2021, here we come. Stop the world. Full speed ahead. Yeah. Yeah, you film that. And then pull back. And all we can say is many thanks to Victron Energy and Battleborn Batteries. Oh, you need me to do it again? <coughs> so, so. <coughs> okay. Ready? Ready. Come on. So all we can say is thank you very much to Victron Energy and Battleborn Batteries.